Hi everyone, how's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Taylor Swift's highly anticipated video, Fortnite, is said to be about heartbreak. But what about the parts where she's chained to a bed, drugged with pills, and electroshocked by mad scientists? Here's the actual sinister meaning of this video. The least one can say is, that Taylor Swift characterized the first half of 2024. And that's an understatement. In the past months, this already insanely popular singer, turned into some kind of untouchable icon, as she transcended her status as a celebrity to reach mass media sainthood. Indeed, Taylor simply cannot do any wrong. Even if she's churning out music that's arguably mediocre, news outlets walk on eggshells when attempt to review her offerings. Whether it be lawsuits or outright threats of violence, there's a bizarre aura of repression surrounding Taylor Swift. Criticism of her work or actions is not well received and has consequences. The 2024 Grammys did nothing to upset Taylor. Quite to the contrary, they've ensured she won the Album of the Year award, becoming the first artist ever to win this prestigious trophy four times. And, after weirdly snubbing Celine Dion, because nobody is allowed to top her, Taylor Swift used her acceptance speech to announce the coming of her album, The Tortured Poets Department. That album title is quite symbolic. Tortured Poets is indeed an apt way of describing artists in the music industry. It can also be taken quite literally. Although Taylor Swift has an untouchable queen aura about her, she remains an industry slave. Taylor promoted her album in a picture featuring a blatant one-eye sign. The message is, she's owned the industry. While Taylor is super rich and influential, she still has to bow down to the industry's higher-ups who built her fame and granted her the media exposure needed to maintain it. The 2024 Super Bowl media coverage was at least 50% about Taylor Swift. Coincidentally, she spent most of her time with Ice Spice, an industry plant who wore a giant very visible inverted cross around her neck. Ice Spice was planted there, to remind us that Taylor is owned by the satanic elite. In short, there's a price to pay to be a big music star. The title The Tortured Poets Department conveys this fact, as industry artists are literally tortured by a system that uses monarch mind control, an offshoot of MK Ultra, to control them. Some might say, I was following you until you mentioned MK Ultra, bro. Well, bro, let's look at the first video from that album. It could not be more blatantly about MK Ultra. It just can't. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you won't miss any updates. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstandings. As usual, Taylor Swift's album mainly consists of her complaining about her exes. Meanwhile, her fans take great pleasure in finding Easter eggs and hidden meanings in her music videos, while completely missing the super obvious hidden meaning. A simple semi-educated look at the video shows it is about much more than heartbreak. The video's first scene is rife with symbolism relating to monarch programming. Taylor Swift is in a psych ward type room and is chained to a bed. Her bed is floating in the air, which hints at her dissociative state as an MK slave. Other items in the room are askew or upside down, further conveying the slave's confused perception of reality due to various techniques, including lots of drugs. Speaking of which, a creepy upside down nurse enters the room to give Taylor her dose. The pill bottle says, forget him, a Taylor Swift way of saying amnesia drug. Causing amnesia through drugs and other methods is a vital part of MK programming. In this scene, Taylor is in a dissociative state 
and is given medication to further programming. A chain Taylor Swift shows off a mind-erasing pill to her fans. She's not special. She's yet another star who has to celebrate her own slavery. After taking the pill, Taylor wipes her face, revealing face tattoos. The tattoos are a replica of Post Malone's face tattoos. While most fans will believe that Post Malone plays the role of Taylor Swift's love interest in the video, the symbolism implies a much darker truth. He's her MK handler. His tattoos on her face represent that she's being imprinted with his programming. The following scenes will make this fact abundantly clear. In another room, Taylor and Post Malone type up words as a colorful haze emerges from the paper. This scene takes place in Taylor's mind, where memories are stored in locked compartments. Post Malone, the MK handler, is inside Taylor's head, and he's writing new memories. The following quote from Fritz Springmeier's book about monarch programming describes this exact process using a similar analogy. By building in amnesia walls between event, personal history, memories, and by producing altered states of consciousness, the memories of a slave can be nested as the programmers call it. Nested means that it is hidden behind several locked doors when the mind files the memory. The two singers are literally inside Taylor's head, which is made of files, aka memories. This is all about controlling and altering her mind. Taylor's MK programming is taken to another level in the next scenes. Taylor is tied up, and her brain is connected to an electroshock machine. For some reason, Ethan Hawke is there. Considering that Ethan Hawke was the main actor in the terrible movie Leave the World Behind, the elite seems to love using him for its indoctrination projects. In this scene, Post Malone, the primary MK handler, examines Taylor's brainwaves. The brainwaves spell out lyrics from the song, implying they've been programmed into her. The words I love you it's ruining my life seem to refer to a sad love story. However, they also describe the twisted relationship between a handler and a slave, where programming and dissociation cause mixed feelings of love and suffering. Taylor gets electroshocked under the watchful eyes of her handlers. Is this video still about heartbreak? After the electroshock, we see what's happening inside Taylor's mind, a whirlwind of burning files, representing memories being erased and scrambled. Each person's original mind is like an open computer. The original computer-like mind, in order to continue working, when confronted with overwhelming trauma, splits a part of the mind off and walls it up with amnesia barriers. The electroshock also scrambles the brain's filing of a memory, so that it is filed in bits and pieces. Because of the use of electroshock, if memories do start surfacing, they surface in pieces. As with several music videos described on this channel, Fortnite is less about art, as it is about normalizing mind control. The following scene is the ultimate confirmation of the monarch programming narrative. Taylor breaks the mirror inside her room. All MK-themed narratives need to contain a mirror or glass-shattering scene. It was true in the 1986 movie Labyrinth, and it is also true in the 2024 music video VN. While, at face value, the scene appears to depict a rebellion, it actually represents the fracturing of the slave's persona into multiple pieces. The video ends with Post Malone talking inside a phone booth while Taylor sits atop it. Wow. So artistic. Taylor Swift is a visual genius. But hold on. What does it mean? How does it relate to heartbreak? It doesn't. It represents an MK handler programming his dissociated slave. Also, is it a coincidence that telephone tones are actually used to trigger MK slaves from a distance? And that's the video. Is there a single music critic who mentioned any of these blatant details in their reviews? Of course not. They'd rather talk about how fabulous she looked in the black dress. Although Taylor Swift ascended to music business royalty and transcended the realm of celebrity to become a social force to be reckoned with, Fortnite brings forth an important truth, she's still a slave. The elite granted her incredible fame, wealth, and influence on the condition that she does as she's told. If she stops complying, it can be taken away extremely easily. 
Yes, even Taylor Swift can become irrelevant in months as she has not provided the media attention required to maintain her status. In Fortnite, Taylor is not an empowered queen. She's a powerless slave. She has zero control over her mind and even the words that come from her mouth. Under the guise of a love song, the video depicts the destruction of an MK slave's core persona to create an altar. While this story might sound fictional, it is all too real, especially in the entertainment industry. A few years ago, Kanye West, one of the biggest stars in the world, was handcuffed and was forcibly hospitalized for months. Yes, months. People close to him stated that he suffered memory loss as a result of drugs and possibly treatments such as electroshock. He came out of this ordeal a thoroughly different person and even sported the trademark MK slave platinum blonde look. Today, he's a creepy shell of a man who acts as Bianca Sensori's MK handler. High-profile MK slaves sometimes turn into handlers themselves. While Taylor might not have undergone the same MK treatment, she's nevertheless used to promote it, normalize it, and even make it glamorous to the millions of people who will inevitably watch the video and to the millions of kids who will think that this video was about their favorite video game, Fortnite. It is not. It is about Taylor Swift being electroshocked into incoherence, because she's part of the music industry, aka the tortured poets department. Now, it's time for me to hear from you, what are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.